Hey, beloveds, this is Reverend Empress Chakra Wanda. So I wanted to announce that I finally was able to get the first interview completed and uh, the editing of the, the uh, podcast. And I'm just take a watch and part one excerpts from part one I'm posting and the full um, first episode will be uploaded to my YouTube at Empress Chakra Wanda okay so welcome to Living an Awakened Life podcast My album, my debut album is called The Joy Soul Experience. I have been a poet and a writer for as long as I can remember writing short stories and just, you know, using my imaginations in my words to sort of create the world around me um, as I saw fit. And so The Joy Soul Experience is an album um it's about 19 minutes nine tracks on the album and i didn't want to make it too long because my intention was for people to listen to the album all the way through and it on the short drive into uh, on the drive into work or you know coming home from work um or those minutes running errands you know in between so that you can those are the times that you know we need that activation starting our day ending our day going throughout the day and just having moments where it's like okay i need a few minutes and so everything about this album was intentional um it was first of all i did not set out writing an album or even recording music let's start there so I was woken up with a dream um, as I've been on my spiritual path and awakening. Um, and I'm sure 2020 shifted me and shifted all of us, you know, with, with how, uh, how things transpired. And so in 2020, um, during shutdown, um, I was woken up with a dream every day at 3.33 for about a week and a half. Um, okay. The first time, it was kind of like, okay, let me just write down my dream, and then, okay, do I need to pray, or am I just, uh, okay, I'm going to sleep. Second time, I was like, mm-mm, spirit, I'm sleeping. Lay back down. <laughs> but as it continued to happen, and as I noticed the time, it was not the same dream every time. It wasn't an entire dream. It was flashes. What I now understand that is is flashes of the things that I am to do in this lifetime or the next, right? And it was just little flashes of, you know, one was me walking on grass in all white, welcoming people to some place. There was a big house behind me. Like there's just different things, right? But all of them were 3.33 in the morning. And finally, I was like, what is it? What? And I heard record your voice. And I was like, okay. And me in my, so people got to understand, I, my wit is sometimes a little dry. Um, and I said, okay, so you gave me a lot of gifts. And I appreciate those gifts. However, one of them was not to sing. So you want me to record myself doing what? <laughs> you did not give me the singing anointing. So what am I supposed to do with that? And as much as I want to. <laughs> and a spirit said to me, speak, you speak. Okay, so, you know, we received that assignment. And I started dilly-dallying, doing other stuff, right? Started going through a spiritual awakening because, you know, I was hard-headed. Mm -hmm. And in about 2020, at the end of 2021, coming into 2022, um, it was just on me. I've got to put my voice on record. I've got to put my voice on record. 
I don't know anything about the music industry at that time and all of that. And I said, okay, let me go ahead and just start doing voice memos and voice recordings and things like that. And so I started writing. And then it was as I started doing the work, um, and I'm going here, so follow. As I started doing the work, the vision began to become revealed to me. And it was like, this is not just something for your phone. This is not just something for your classes. This is something for you to share with the collective. And I was like, okay, so you got to connect me with who to record with, where, what to do. I know nothing about this. I was like, but what I can do, what I know how to do is write. So I'm just going to start writing. And so I started writing along my journey. Uh, I met an uh, amazing artist named Ebby Sachs, who also is my partner today. And she was like, oh, your voice, like you don't even understand and she was like well i've got a great studio i know some amazing producers you know that have helped me develop as an artist i would love to introduce you to them and i was like let's do it so we went to the studio no let me back up we planned an appointment we set an appointment to go to the studio i had nothing up until the night before we were recording i was like I have a whole appointment at the studio tomorrow and I have no idea what I'm going to do. I have no idea. I could not, like, it, I, I couldn't. And the things that I had written before didn't quite feel like what I was supposed to do. And she said to me, you know what? I have this beat that I saw, that I heard. And I was like, I, I want to do this, but there's something so powerful that's supposed to happen with this beat and the beat was what is now the beat to vibe with me and I listened to the beat and immediately words start coming out now mind you I had had writer's block for the last couple of weeks and as soon as I started listening to the words it activated something in my spirit and words started coming. I mean as soon as I listened to the beat it activated my spirit and words start coming forth so we wrote that song that night went to the studio, recorded it, completed the whole song in four hours. From recording to retakes to, you know, Danny, who's my amazing producer, Dirt Soul, uh, you yeah. know, doing the mixing and the mastering and all that stuff. Walked out of the studio, Vibe With Me was done. Wow. And I, Which song was that, too? That That is called Vibe With Me. It's the okay. second song. It's like the intro and then Vibe With Me. And in the middle of recording, or not in the middle, toward the end of the recording, um, I had one of my friends who also is spiritually tapped in. She said, you realize this is the first song on your album, right? Wow. And I was like, yeah. I didn't come in here to record an album. I didn't have a song until last night <laughs> and this morning. And it really was probably the same thing. So there's so, so, so there's nine. Well, there's eight, and then there's an interlude. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was like, okay, guess we're doing an album. Well, guess what? You gave me this idea, so you have to give me the words. You have to give me the beats. You have to give me, you know, I, I'm just gonna stand in alignment, and I'm going to allow everything to come with me. And so. We, I ended up writing and recording all the songs on the album are written by myself. Um, Evie Sachs did some, a lot of the vocals. She did some background vocals. She um, was, is featured on several of the songs, a couple of the songs, two or three of the songs. Um, but everything was written. We got licenses for all the beats that we used. You know, I come from a background of business. I have been a hairstylist. Um, and makeup artist in the beauty industry for the last 20 years. And so for me, it was like, okay, I have to make sure that everything is copywritten. Like, you know, I went through all the things, right? Um, also, because I've always been a music lover, I have watched, um, you know, some tale, like some warnings, you know, of other artists. And so I was like, at least, at the very least, let me just copyright it. I don't know you know if this is going to be a record deal type of thing i wasn't necessarily i'm not even looking for that um 
but I was just like, I know that I have to get this out. And so each song, I allowed the words to come to me. I didn't sit down and say, okay, I'm going to write another song. I allowed the words to come to me. Um, I may have listened to beats, but sometimes the beat that I wrote to was not the actual song that ended up on the album. It was just what I needed to bring that song out of me. And then we transposed those lyrics to another beat. Um, so it definitely was a process. It was a process, but it was a beautiful, beautiful process. And so what we have today is the Joy Soul Experience. Oh, my God. And um, now, the audience, before I get into the questions, because you actually answered some of them, and, and when we come to them again, you can go a little deeper mm -hmm. uh, as you're wanting to express. And so, Joy and I intersected in a private group, yes. um, a, a mentoring um, journey that we're experiencing. You want to tell out the audience how we intersected? Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, the amazing Tony Jones has been a pioneer in affirmation music. Um, there, of course, have been, you know, poets that have recorded their poetry over music. There have been speakers who have recorded um, albums and things like that. Um, there are artists that are out there, you know, before she came, since she's come out. Um, but there was just something special and something different about the way Tony did it. And, um, you know, she has changed and impacted the lives of a lot of folks, me included. Um, I'm sure you included, Chaka. Thank you. And, and so she had posted, because I followed her on social media, she had posted that she was um, taking a small. Which, well, the first thing that she posted was that she that I saw that she was that she was going to do a private sort of um, webinar training, um, talking about kind of her journey and how she got to where she is and things like that. And you know, as a a person that enjoys, as a fan, I was like, sure, I'd love to, you know, sit on that Zoom and and hear, you know, how she sort of came about. Um, I'm on my own journey, but it always is important and, you know, encouraging to listen to where other people were and are. And so I got on the Zoom thinking that was it, right? Like, she's going to do this webcast. We're going to listen to her testimony. We'll ask her a few questions. And this is going to be great. And um, once I got on, I realized that, yes, it was that. But she also was offering a very special opportunity to uh, work with her, that she was going to take a very small group um, of affirmation artists and help to develop them, help to mentor them, help to coach them through whatever areas they needed, whatever stages, writing, development, you know, publishing, etc. And um, I was like, this absolutely is something that I'm interested in. And so I, like myself, jumped on that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I um have been following Tony for a few years. My best friend, one of my best friends, massage therapist, literally whenever I would go get my sessions, she would play some of her affirmation music. Nice. You, you know, so I'm reading, you know, receiving, you know, the energy, you know, the body is being nurtured and cared for. It's just her music empowerment while I was on the table. Uh, different tempos, it just, you know, mm -hmm. it raised my vibration. So sometimes I would post also when I get up in the morning, I do a little, I guess a skit thing. You see me getting in the car and I'm turning into some empowerment music. So I have a goddess playlist. Yeah. And you guys, um, you know, timing, divine alignment is everything. I just happen to see her call to action with regard to embracing 20 souls, I caught it at the right time. And I invested my time and the exchange that um, to be a part of that. And I was still working, you know, listening and participating 
it was more, it was beyond a workshop. Mm-hmm. It was not just the bells and whistles of how to, you know, take your writings and, you know, find a producer and all that. We had a really beautiful combination of people of all walks of life yes. and different levels of experiences. Some, like Joy, who the timing I see definitely was divine. Mm-hmm. And where she is, there were people who either wrote and never put anything to music or vice versa. They had some musical inclination. And then there was those like myself that didn't have any formal. I um, do spiritual writing, um, poetic expression over the many years since 2005, but nothing really formal. I use the TikTok features and, you know, the little production tools, but nothing. But in the merging of us, in experiencing Tony's um, beautiful um, presence, transparency yes. in her journey, and how some of the songs were literally birthed through dark night periods. But you have to check out Tony. She has a private group called The Living Room on the mm-hmm. M- Mighty Network, yes. I believe. Yes. And for a nominal fee, you get to move in closer with her. So I want to give a shout out to that. And it was beautiful as she took us each. There were tears that were, that were shed, y'all. I mean, there was a bond that was created, and we're looking forward to reconnecting with her. She's been traveling, yes. and we'll, she'll connect back with us next month, month August uh, of 2023. Um, so I left from that uh, very empowered, and there was some chatter with the group offline, and Joy and I began to merge together. And when the time was right, we began to connect voice to voice. That frequency yeah. was uh, has been divine. So she said, yes, I told her what I was doing. First time we talked was for two hours, really. Yes. And um, so it, 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 it kind of flowed organically. Um, so yeah, I want to start the questions. Okay. So living an awakened life. What does spiritual awakening mean to you? And you know, because that interpretation of how we see things is different for everyone. And we are in a time now where this idea of awakening, waking up, what is your definition? What does spiritual awakening mean to you? Absolutely. So spiritual awakening to me... um, means that not only am I awake physically, consciously, but it is an awakening sometimes via trauma, pain, loss, various reasons, things that cause us to stop and pay attention, right? Um, A spiritual awakening to me is that moment where your consciousness your subconscious, your consciousness as a spirit being wakes up and says, you are more than just flesh. You are more than what meets the eye. There is something on the inside of you that you need to bring forth for yourself, for your bloodline, for your lineage, for the collective, for this realm. And I believe that all of us at some point in life can go into that path or have opportunities or moments for spiritual awakening. But the major difference with that is how you respond to your spiritual awakening. Mm -hmm. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to ask that question. Is the audience receives that embody what she shares but what does that interpretation for you Mm. for each person it can be different yeah so another second question is when did your awakening occur you already shared that it was around the 2020 period time frame it was a little bit more yeah yeah so when that happened, would you say that that was the actual beginning 
or joy? Can you look at your timeline and see inklings of that process happening? Yes. So that that was, I'll say this, 2020, the activation that I received in 2020 paved the way for the path that I'm on now. But I can look at my timeline of my life. And I have had many spiritual awakenings. I have multiple, I've had multiple moments where my consciousness was awakened and I realized a higher version of myself. I realized a deeper consciousness that I had before the awakening happened. Um, And at each level in the journey, they essentially build upon each other. So they're all connected, but right. a lot of the times they're they built upon each other. They build via you know maturity, growth, life experience, um, sometimes pain, trauma, certain things. But they are different moments in time where I can say, right there, at that point in 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at that point in 2011, yeah, at that point in 2007, yeah, at that point, yeah. <laughs> you know, in yeah. 1998, yeah. Mm-hmm. my life changed. Mm-hmm. Like, I can literally go yeah. back and I can see where the pivots, the turns, the shifts were in my life that led me to where I am today. And there will be another, I'm sure, because it is a part of my journey. It is a part of my path. And so each time I think that I've learned more about myself, I've gotten more in tune with who I truly am. And I've gotten more information on how to move going forward. Mm -hmm. So there are choices that have to be made when you're on this awakening journey, um, I wanted to activate this podcast, keeping in mind that there will be different souls that will see this, but many will be new in their awakening journey. Mm -hmm. And there are choices that have to be made to say, you know what? As you mentioned, you did see inklings of different parts of awakening. It's almost like being in a physical bed with the covers over you. Mm-hmm. And that's how I see the 3D in this now moment. Mm-hmm. We come into the planet, and because of, of mass consciousness, mass consciousness starts off or an agreement on the planet, being born into it, 3D is all pretty much um, a box uh, functioning from lack, limitation, uh, survival, more from survival. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you haven't been successful at surviving with just the 3D lens. Yeah. You can be, we we have been conditioned to be successful in that way. But moving into more of the fourth and fifth dimension, what sounds like there's never enough, you move into the fourth, there's always plenty, and then the fifth is there's unlimitedness. Right. Right? Right. And you're breathing in that, you're breathing, here's three, there's four, here's three, then it's four, and it's five. And these are not separate places because you're operating in all of them Mm -hmm. at the same time. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, you're in this space, when you start to see inkling, say, wait a minute, there's more to what I am. You know, the 3D coming into this dimension raises up us to just being familiar with our avatar. Mm-hmm. Right. Physical hearing, physical smelling, physical taste, touch and feel. Not often are we received as a divine, beautiful child in this avatar 
and raised to understand the fullness of us as spiritual beings with spiritual sight, clairvoyance. Yeah. I saw a sign. Clear as uh, clairaudient, clairsentient, claircognizant, and understanding your energetic blueprint. What was happening in the universe at the moment you enter into this dimension. And even beyond that, depending on the systems that have been provided to us, okay, where people want to say sometimes woo-woo or I don't pay attention. No, you came from the stars. You came here. Right now, there is a beautiful soul that's probably reincarnating. And we all, we all have different maturity in our spirituality. There will people be here in the third dimension that will last 90 years but never have grown spiritually. So we're, we're not, it's, it's not common to come here on the planet. You could be fully awakened as a baby, but you're raised by parents that, oh, don't say you see these things, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't say you hear these things, right? So it gets snuffed. I'm generalizing, but I think everyone gets the point. 